The Galaxy S20 Ultra is officially three months old, actually longer depending on when you see this video. In that three months, Samsung has been great at putting out updates, but the real question is, how effective have those updates been? Let's talk about it. The Galaxy S20 Ultra is such a groundbreaking device. It also still happens to empty pockets in more ways than one. First, the price still starts at $1399, but at the time of this video, there are a few deals going on. Most, if not all, do require you to trade in a phone, so just keep that in mind. One thing I noticed that's new is Samsung Access, which seems to be really interesting. For an affordable monthly payment, you can pick up the S20 device that you want. For instance, the S20 Ultra is 48 bucks a month. This includes Samsung Care device insurance and a subscription to Microsoft 365, plus one terabyte of OneDrive storage. It's super easy to sign up. You can exchange your device at any time for a different phone, and you can cancel at any time so you're not locked into a long-term contract. I think this is a good option to grab a new Galaxy device if you haven't picked up one yet. If you're invested in Samsung and plan on sticking with them in the future, personally, I think it's a no-brainer. The second way the S20 Ultra is emptying out pockets is size. I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but I still can't get over the monstrous size, weight, and camera hump on the S20 Ultra. It's a massive phone that needs some extra wiggle room inside of a pocket. I bring this up again because this phone has slipped out of my pocket while I'm driving or sitting down more than any other phone. The good thing is that it's held up really well, despite several tumbles. I only have a few micro scratches, which could be due to sand in my pocket versus all the slides, skirts, and tumbles. Luckily, the one-handed mode has been really helpful and it makes managing the phone much, much easier. Check out my video above for more tips and tricks like this one if you're interested. One benefit to having such a big phone is having a big, beautiful display. And even after three months, the S20 Ultra still impresses me. The Full HD plus 120 hertz mode is fantastic and really smooth. The Quad HD plus 60 hertz mode is super sharp and no matter what mode you're in, you're gonna get excellent color accuracy. Supposedly, we still might be getting an update that will unlock 120 hertz at Quad HD plus, but I personally would rather have a 90 hertz mode in both Quad HD plus and Full HD plus. But what do you think? Let me know down below. When you combine the display with the speakers on the S20 Ultra, watching videos and even listening to music or podcast is great. While I'm getting ready in the mornings, I generally have my favorite podcast playing or I'll catch up on a few YouTube videos and it's been my go-to phone to do that. Even more than my iPhone 11 Pro Max and if you know me, that's saying a lot. You know, one thing I prefer on my iPhone though is Face ID. I'm not a huge fan of the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner found on Galaxy devices. I feel like every time I start to get a consistent experience, I get an update, and then I need to re-register all of my fingers once again. It's a little annoying and something that has happened more than twice since getting my S20 Ultra. The SD card slot is still pretty sweet and really convenient. I haven't filled up my internal storage at all, but at the same time, not having to worry about that stressful situation occurring is pretty nice. Plus with 8K video and high resolution photos, over time, the internal storage will fill up pretty quick. So it's nice that I can offload stuff anytime that I want. I did make a video on storage tips and tricks that includes SD card use. So if you missed that video, make sure to check it out. Samsung and I guess Android devices as a whole have gotten really good about performance over time. Where a few years ago, you would buy an Android phone and then you might experience slowdowns and lag over the course of time. I really haven't seen this for the most part in devices that were released in the last two to three years. So of course the performance on the S20 Ultra has been nothing short of excellent these last two to three months. I guess to be clear, I'm referring to the Snapdragon model. If you have the Exynos version, feel free to share your experience in the comment section down below as I have no experience using that particular model. One thing I do need to add is ever since installing the June 1st security patch and updating my stock apps like the Gallery app, I've run into a lot of random app crashes. It's been random and hard to replicate on camera, but always occurs when I'm editing a photo. Nonetheless, it's sporadic like I stated, and you may or may not run into this issue, but I wanted you to be aware of it in case you did. Day-to-day -day performance has been excellent these past three months. One UI is just such an excellent Android skin that I almost don't miss stock Android at all. But, and I know this isn't specific to the S20 series, I do wish Samsung would allow the Google Now homepage instead of the Samsung Daily page. Using third-party launchers is fine to get this feature, don't get me wrong, but Nova does not support Android 10 gestures at the moment or at the time of this video, and I really don't care to go back to on-screen navigation buttons. Is it a third-world problem? Maybe, but it's what I prefer. Plus, how hard could it be for Samsung just to add the option? 
And while we're on the subject of changing a few things, I wish One UI would allow the use of third-party icon packs. Icon customization using the built-in Samsung theme store is nice, but they don't really change anywhere near the amount of icons that icon packs from the Play Store can change. OnePlus's Oxygen OS, I feel, does a fantastic job with allowing tons of customization straight out of the Play Store, so I would just use that as a benchmark. I've never really been a mobile or smartphone gamer until recently. It's just not been my cup of tea. Uh, however, I've really been giving it a shot more and more. The Galaxy S20 Ultra is my go-to gaming phone at the time of this video. I've never used the Razer phone or the ROG phone, so for me, the S20 Ultra brings an excellent combination of a smooth refresh rate, great audio from the speakers, and stellar performance while actually gaming. I've played several games from the Play Store over the last three months, and it's been excellent, but what really impressed me was Project xCloud. I've talked about it and mentioned it in previous videos. I use an Xbox controller combined with a cheap mount to attach my S20 Ultra to the controller, and it's like having a mini Xbox. Actually, it reminds me of the Shield Portable from several years ago, and I love it. The battery life has also been fantastic. Do me a favor and let me know what you recommend for a gaming controller that I can mount my S20 Ultra to. I'd like to get something a little bit more compact and portable versus this Xbox controller. Battery life has been fine. Honestly, no real change from my 30 day update video. I guess this is a good thing since it's consistent and it's better than what I'm able to achieve on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I do not recommend that you purchase the 45 watt fast charger though. I've used it maybe three times since getting my S20 Ultra and the charger. Ironically, I use it to charge my iPad Pro more than my S20 Ultra. One thing I've been doing a lot these last three months is editing photos on my S20 Ultra. I love the large display when put in Quad HD Plus mode to edit photos. I edit photos shot with the onboard camera or I'll import them from my X-T3. What's funny is that I never knew Samsung devices running the latest version of the gallery app have built-in RGB curves for editing. I'll talk about it more in an upcoming video where I'm going to share a few more tips and tricks for the S20. So if you don't wanna miss that, you know what to do. I guess this leads me to the camera, but first a quick disclaimer. At the time of this video, the firmware that will unlock a macro mode has not yet been released. This means that more improvements and enhancements may be coming with the addition of that new feature. But for now, let's just talk about the camera. Here are some samples taken with the S20 Ultra running the latest firmware versus the original firmware. Image quality wise, it's honestly about the same. There might be a slight improvement to how highlights are handled, but without performing this test in a more controlled environment where I can replicate the exact same things, uh, it's hard to tell. Even when looking at 108 megapixel images, the processing looks to be identical, minus maybe some changes in contrast. But again, one small change in that shot can change the metering and that will change the entire photo. If you wanna see a more scientific test in a controlled environment using the S20 Ultra, let me know. 30X and 10X are still really impressive and look almost identical to the original firmware. I mean, looking at the shots of this little bunny, you could definitely see what I mean. I'm sure some of you are wondering about the 100 times zoom and if it's been improved. Well, yes, yes it has. It now has more contrast. The S20 Ultra is the only phone that has a camera which doubles as a hunting rifle, being able to turn a peaceful little thumper bunny into cotton. I guess the real improvement is in the experience and while you're using the camera. Autofocus is slightly improved and is a bit more reliable and faster, though it's still not on the same page as like the S20 or the S20 Plus. Despite all of the improvements and all of the enhancements, I've actually run into a strange bug that causes my camera to have a weird crop no matter what mode I'm in. It's almost like telephoto is on, but if I switch to wide, it switches to the wide angle but still remains digitally cropped. I have to force close the app a few times and eventually it will go back to normal. Using the S20 Ultra these past three months has been fun. While it's still not the phone I was hoping for when I first saw all of the leaks and got my hands on the phone, it's a feature rich device that I can't stop using. I just hope that Samsung is able to fix some of these issues without creating new ones. Guess we'll have to see. Let me know how your experience has been using your Galaxy S20 no matter what model you have. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos just like this and I will catch you fabulous people in the next one. Oh,